Hello everyone. Today we will go over a quick uh, demo of uh, Browse Tech Test Management. When you log into Browse Tech Test Management, this is the first page uh, that you would uh, see. Uh, this is the All Projects page, which will help you glance to all your existing test management projects. Now, these are the projects that you can either manually create uh, from this option at the top, or you can also import your existing projects from your current tools. And those tools could be, let's say, you're currently using Test Rail or Zephyr Scale or X Ray. You can, in through just few clicks, you can seamlessly import your test cases in real time uh, from your uh, current offering uh, without much of an hassle. So I'll I'll just quickly show you how I can import data from Test Rail. So I have to all I have to do is just fill in my Test Rail email address, Test Rail host name, and Test Rail API key. I have these data points pre-filled for this demo. So I can just test the connection, if the connection is working fine or not. Yeah, it looks like it's fine. So now I, I can just click on proceed. And what this connection will do is it will pull all the existing test trail projects that I have in my account, and I can import all of them in one shot, or I can, let's say, for the sake of this demo, just select one of the projects and begin my import. And that's it. In the background, the import will continue, and I'll have I can also track the real time progress of how the import is looking like, right? And let's let's move ahead and see the other features of the project. So I can also like go over a demo project which uh, comes pre-filled in your account if you are creating a fresh account. Demo project are basically uh, pre-filled with a lot of data which can help you ex explore the product in easier fashion. And when you go inside any of the project, you will find multiple menu options on the left. So the first one being the dashboard, which will help you get a glimpse of your entire testing activity, your test case creation, test run creation. Uh, test case is the place where you can do test case authoring. You can create, uh, store, organize your test cases in multiple folders, subfolders, right? Uh, and you can search these uh, test cases on the basis of uh, a particular test case ID or title. You have filtering options which you can leverage to look for a specific test case or a bunch of test cases, right? Test runs is, is a menu which uh, gives you capability to create manual or automated test cases and get a centralized view of your uh, unifi unified testing, right, of your respective teams. And each of these test runs will also show you the overall progress of testing, how many test cases are passing, failing. Again, what are the set of runs that have been recently closed and what are the runs that are active? Now, test plans are sort of higher uh, level entity, which will help you group test runs within a test plan. And you can basically look at uh, progress of multiple test runs within a test plan to gauge the performance of specific team, which is, let's say, engaged in doing multiple testing activities simultaneously. Right. I'll, I'll show you test and test plans in a bit as well in detail. And reports is sort of, uh, you know, capabilities which will help you get a historical uh, sneak peek into how the testing has happened for your respective teams for uh, areas like test run summary and test run detail report, right? And we're adding more reports, uh, reporting capabilities in the product, right? So now I, I'll I'll quickly, okay, our import is in progress from test fail. I think they should complete in a while. I'll quickly take you over to a project that I have in my uh, account uh, for uh, this demo. And I'll want to spend some time on test case authoring experience to show you how uh, easy and frictionless it is for users to create test cases. So. Like I mentioned, you can organize test cases within different folders. So I can, let's say, have a new uh, test case folder called uh, payment, payments test cases, right? So there's a new folder that I've created and my import from test rail, by the way, has completed. So I can just quickly go to all projects and see that this test rail project has come just, uh, just now. And I can go inside this project and I can probably glance through all these test cases that have come from my test rail account. So it is very simple, easy, and effortless to import your test cases from a bunch of these tools that I talked about, be it test rail, Zephyr scale, or X-ray, right? Now, all these test cases are uh, basically also going to retain the test case ID nomenclature that test rail provides. Uh, and inside, inside these test cases, you'll find steps, expected results, and all the other attributes that are defined in your test rail account, which are going to show up uh, automatically, right? Now, quickly going back to our uh, project that we were discussing. So in, in in this particular project, I have this new folder that I just now created, Payments Test Cases. And I can author, let's say inside this folder, I can start adding test cases like Payments Basic Flow, right? I can Payments Flow with 
PayPal as payments platform, right? And I can likewise do it with Stripe. So it's super fast to create test cases through one line addition. If you want to create a detailed test case uh, form, you can create, click on this create test case button and you can open up a detailed form which will have a bunch of other feeds like, you know, test case state, who is the owner of the test case, uh, what is the priority by default, every test case gets created the medium priority. You can change the order of the, uh, or the value of the priority as well and bunch of other fields that will show up over here. Uh, I can also select from what kind of template I'm interested in adding in test case for. So let's say I'm adding uh, this particular test case with steps driven template. So I can add a bunch of steps. So for the sake of uh, this demo, I'm just copy pasting the same content in each of these steps. I can add multi-step uh, test case. I can have some preconditions which are going to be uh, necessary to be run before this particular these steps are performed, right? I can upload attachments and I can do a bunch of uh, other activities, right? So this test case, this is a detailed test case that I just now created and these are the steps that are going to show up over here. Now, a quick addition that we have done in this entire experience is our AI capability, which will help you enrich your test case repository and uh, probably like look out for some of the test cases that you might have missed out, right? So we want to help you uh, look out for those corner scenarios which you probably like, which probably have been missed by the team and AI can help you discover those test cases effortlessly, right? So I have this uh, project for Instacart web testing. So Instacart is a grocery platform in base of US. I have uh, certain folders for uh, Instacart web testing, which is like for home page, charts, cards page, checkout page, payments page. Let's say I go to checkout page and I see that it has only one test case uh, right now, which is added, right? So it says checkout, check Instacart checkout page load time, right? What if I like want more test cases to be added here? So I'll probably like click on uh, this generate uh, capability. And uh, what this capability does is in the background, it will start looking for certain test cases, which could be potential additions to your existing repo, right? Meanwhile, while this happens, another capability of uh, uh, AI. So when you go inside a particular test case, you can also enrich the test case uh, details by using an autocomplete capability of AI, right? So I'll click on this AI button. And what this button will do is it will enrich this test case, which is right now quite clean and empty. I have just the test case title written over here and nothing else beyond this capability, right? So let's see what kind of capability uh, this button is going to show us, right? So I think this is pre-filled now. So the initial title said check Instacart sign up page load time. And now I have a you know, description pre-filled for this particular scenario. I have some preconditions which talk about checking the speed of the internet checking whether you have a valid Instacart account or not, checking I should have a proper web browser installed on my device. And, and to enrich it further, I have step-by-step -step potential use cases or scenarios which the AI capability gives me, right? So I have to open the web browser, I have to enter the Instacart website URL, I have to click on the sign up button. So AI already assumes that there will be a sign up button on your homepage. And it basically helps you also go about starting a timer to do testing for the time because this test case is all about checking the load time. So it's, it's suggesting you that can you can you should start the timer for uh, sign up page as soon as you land on it, right? And then record the time basically, right? And automatically the test case template was changed from test text to steps, earlier it was text, right? So this is one capability that we have built to enrich existing test cases. And this is the other capability that was running in the background. Now I have now multiple test cases that are suggested in this folder for checkout. Now it's it's suggesting like, I, I should like go ahead and check the uh, search functionality. I should, and so I, I can look for what are the relevant ones and I can add them in my repository. This one, this is a particular test case which I find to be more relevant, like check Instacart checkout page load time after uh, adding a product to cart, right? So what's the performance looking like when I'm adding a product specifically to a cart, what's the performance looking like for the checkout page, right? So this is a test case which I'm probably interested in adding to my repository. So I'll go ahead and add this suggested test case in my repository. Now this test case becomes part of my uh, repository permanently, right? And the ones that I'm not interested, I can probably delete the suggestions, right? So AI automatically factors in what kind of user engagement that you're doing, right? So this was around uh, test case authoring experience. Now we also have capability to like import test cases through CSV. You can go ahead and import your CSV files and you can go about generating uh, test cases from your CSV file. So I have a sample CSV file, which I have imported here. I can click on proceed and 
by default, your incoming fields from your uh, CSV file will be read and they will be mapped uh, from with the system fields. And if I'm not probably liking any of the fields that are getting automatically mapped, I can drop those fields or update the mappings, right? I can click on proceed and wait for my entire uh, CSV import to basically uh, complete. Right, so this is done. So I've just now imported all my you know test cases from uh, uh, from uh, CSV file. So I think these are the test cases that I added from CSV file in this particular folder. So these are all read from uh, my test case or my CSV file. Right. So now I think moving forward, we have uh, uh, you know the next capability which is around uh, test runs. And I think before I I move to test runs, I also want to quickly talk about uh, our Jira app, which helps you integrate your browser test management with uh, your project management tools such as Jira uh, effortlessly and there is a bi-directional Jira integration. So all you have to do is you have to go to uh, Jira Marketplace and just search for browser stack and you'll get two apps uh, in the search results. One is the paid app, another one is the free app. I'll, I'll just talk about the free one. You can go ahead and purchase the uh, product from the free, for the, for the, uh, from the paid app flow as well. Uh, and you can go ahead and install this app uh, from that Latin Marketplace. And once you install the app, for any of your Jira stories, you will start finding this browse tech prompt and you can start linking your test cases from the SaaS platform and also the test runs from your, task plat from your uh, SaaS platform here. And what this helps you um, get an overall view is you can check all the relevant test cases in central place and you can start tracking the traceability view of uh, your entire testing activity. and basically uh, go about also authoring some new test cases here. Let's say if I've missed out any test case, I can go ahead and add some test cases here as well. Right, and by default, the folder structure is basically read from the SaaS platform and I can alter the location of uh, my test case that I'm adding from my Jira story as well. So I can go ahead and add this test case, which gets uh, you know added in real time here. And I can start also marking results for uh, this media test case. Now, uh, the bi-directional Jira integration at browser stack test management is, is very uh, smooth and effortless. I can toggle from Jira app to my browser stack test management platform and look at that particular test case uh, easily. This is a test case that is basically uh, I've navigated from and I can move from my test case repository to Jira app uh, through the bi-directional integration. Right? So uh, this will come in very handy for teams which are heavily engaged with uh, Jira app and we are likewise building bi-directional integration with Azure and other uh, project management tools as well, right? Quickly jumping on to uh, test runs capability. So test runs uh, is, is a module which helps you create both manual and automated test runs like I talked about. And manual test run creation is, is super easy and uh, simple to get started with. I can dump in my test cases which I find relevant for my testing activity, I have some filtering options on the right, which I can choose to filter my test cases that I want to get added in my test run. Uh, let's say I've, I'll just add these new test cases that I added just now. Uh, and I can also attach Jira issues. I can also attach any of the ex existing test plans. I'll come to test plans also in a bit, but I have some test plans which are already uh, created. So I'll add this test run and group it under a test plan, uh, uh, which is this one. And I will go ahead and create this test run. So I have a new Manual test run, which is created, it has four test cases. Right now, there is no overall progress. Uh, and I can start, I can go inside this test run and ma start marking results for these test cases, let's say in, in, in bulk. And I'll say that these are all passing. I can upload some proof for my testing activity. Uh, I can also attach uh, any Jira issues. If let's say the test cases are failing, I can attach uh, Jira issues and I can say that, you know, these are the test cases that are failing. And this is a tracking ticket for my, uh, uh, for my bug, uh, right, for this thing. Uh, as you can see now, this is marked as failed and there's a corresponding tracking ticket as well for uh, this issue, right? And you can see like, because it's a step-driven template, I can have a uh, step-driven uh, result that I can also track. So let's say this particular test case is failing. This is also failing. And of course, if these all are failing, probably everything else will fail. But had this been passing and let's say this was failing, uh, automatically we will we'll probably like, you know, get blocked uh, for the third uh, Step. So I can I can play around with this and I can overall also determine my overall test run status uh, at an aggregate level, right? Now this is about like manual test runs. You when you come to automated test runs, there are two ways you can upload your automation results. One is through a simple endpoint that we have exposed. Uh, it's a 
simple curl driven endpoint which you can uh, integrate for multiple frameworks. So you, these are all the test automation frameworks that we support. And if you happen to export results in standard JUnit XML or BDD JSON file formats, you can basically hit our endpoint that we have exposed and give us your JUnit XML file or BDD JSON file, and we will start reading results from your report file, right? So this is one way of uh, giving us the data for your from your automation flows and all your test cases will be read from your JNOT file and they will be automatically showing, going to, they're going to show up here with all the corresponding results that your JNOT file is going to have, right? And the beauty of uh, importing these test cases is that these test cases will automatically start showing up in your automation folder in the test case repo. So you have a unified uh, view of your manual test cases and automated test cases in a, in a single repository, right? And while test runs is also aggregated with to give a both a solid view of manual and automated test runs. The other way through which you can import your automated test run is through browser stack test observability. It's our uh, sister product, which uh, basically uh, is, is, is powered through browser stack SDK. You have to install uh, browser stack SDK and it reads all your test cases uh, in form of build runs. And browser stack test management is natively integrated with test observability product. So all your uh, build runs are going to automatically show up over here and they are visually differentiated through this icon. I can go inside my uh, build runs and I can start seeing the corresponding data which is coming, which is powered by browser like SDK, right? And if their test cases are failing, I can go inside, I can go directly jump from test management to browse like test observability product. I can see uh, more deep dive around the time travel of what exactly went wrong uh, in terms of testing or reports. Uh, some, you know, some kind of screenshots if I'm interested in looking at or videos for the execution activity that has happened. So I can see all that uh, in test observability tool, right? With the detailed stack trace, the videos of my execution, if it's a CBD testing or a cross-browser testing that I'm doing, and network logs, uh, other set of logs, and uh, a detailed set of uh, basically traceability of what went wrong or well in your automation flows, right? So these are the two ways to which you can import your uh, automation flows. One is through a simple JNOT XML upload through the curl endpoint that we have exposed. And the other one is to browse like SDK powered by uh, test observability, right? Now, I think moving ahead, I have we have like test plans, which is a new feature that we have recently introduced. And test plans are, a, a, a hierarchically speaking, it's a one level uh, higher kind of uh, connotation uh, for testing activity. I can group bunch of test plans within a test plan, I can see overall what's the testing activity looking like. So in this particular test plan, I have two test runs which are grouped and I can see overall progress of individual test runs and I can also see overall test plan progress as well. So in this overall test plan, I have 62 test cases and uh, around 46% of them are passing, rest 51% are failing and a bunch of them are in other states, right? And I can also, I can also see overall uh, progress of testing activity for uh, this particular test plan through this graph. Uh, I can uh, also uh, see uh, the other artifacts around like when was this test plan created and any particular description of the test plan as well. I can, for you, I can create uh, a test plan uh, right now. I, by default, it, every test plan will have like a start date and end date so that you can track, are you delayed or are you good in terms of completing the test plan uh, activity on time. So test plans necessarily are going to basically align with your upcoming release and make, make it'll make sure that your teams uh, kind of adhere to the timelines for release, right? So this is, uh, I can like create a test plan here and I can go inside, uh, let's say any of the existing test plans. So this one, as you can see, it, it says it's 13 days overdue. The completion date is supposed, supposed to be January 10th and we are right now already on 23rd January date. So it's 13 days overdue and there is only 57% progress, right? So the team is probably need to like catch up on this test plan. This one is still like, I think 100% complete and it, it still has eight days left. So this is good and I can mark this as completed, right? So I can mark, uh, so end date was 31st, but I can mark, let's say today's date itself as the completed date. And and I'm I'm done with this particular test plan. So it moves to the completed plan bucket, right? So it it again helps you get a top-down view uh, for as if you're a QA leader, QA manager, it helps you get an overall view and drill down view of your team's activity, right? I think moving ahead, uh, we have, uh, I'll first go to dashboard before coming to reports. So dashboard gives you an overall uh, kind of perspective of uh, different modules of the product. So I get an overview of uh, my uh, ongoing test runs and what are the test cases that are currently part of my ongoing test run. So there are 739 test cases that are part of my 
ongoing testing activity and their corresponding statuses. So only 13% of test cases are marked as passed, while like 8% has failed and 70% is still untested. So which is kind of an action item for me to probably go deeper into each of these tests and, and see why a large number of them are still untested, right? On the right here, I can historically see a trend of uh, test cases uh, that are, you know, uh, got the, that got closed over a period of last 12 months. Uh, I think moving ahead, so closed testing is one view that you get. And then a, from a granular month by month perspective, I can see uh, what was the spike or uh, performance like for each of these closed testings. I can also view my automation coverage. Uh, it's a very critical metric which QA teams want to track and probably set some targets for their teams. Uh, so I have overall 182 manual test cases, 50 of them are only automated. So my automation coverage probably is like, uh, is on the lower side uh, compared to the industry standard. I would want to like probably set some targets for my team, right? Now here you get an overall picture of the type of test cases that you have added in your platform. So how many are functional, how many are regression, how many are accessibility, and many of them are basically uncategorized as well. So I can set some action item for my team to start marking these uh, other test cases also as a valid, with a valid value. Right. And on the right here, I have a historical trend of what kind of test cases the teams are adding. So these are the total test cases, the trend of total test cases, then manual test cases, and uh, the top five uh, category wise test cases that are getting added on the platform. Right. So automation, functional, accessibility, and usability. Uh, it sets me a good kind of insight uh, around uh, the testing trend and test case authoring trend for my teams. Right. Down below is your Jira issues or defects that are getting filed for your test results or test runs. And again, I get an overall view of uh, the spikes and, and the low phases of my entire testing activity and gives me a good uh, overall uh, perspective of my org's testing activity, right? Now, I think moving forward, so we have recently also introduced reports capability. Uh, and we have started with like two uh, out of the box reports, which is like one is test and summary and test and detail. And uh, Let's say I, I, I have uh, uh, this report, which is already created, so I can go inside this report. Uh, this report is for all the testing activity that has been uh, done in last 24 hours across my this project. And I can see that there are three test runs that are created uh, in last 24 hours. And each across these test runs, how many test cases are there? How many linked issues are there? What is the test case breakup? Uh, and what's the test runs breakup? Uh, for uh, uh, these uh, test runs, how many of them are in new state? How many of them are marked in done state? Uh, who are the people who are adding results for these test runs? What are the defects that are linked with test results or test runs? What is the status of those bugs or issues that are filed in terms of priority and status, right? I can schedule these uh, reports. Uh, I can go to edit report. I can start scheduling these reports. This, this report is already scheduled. I've scheduled this for 5 uh, p.m. UTC time and I can attach list of recipients who will report will receive an email report uh, every day at like 5 p.m., uh, right? And I can start adding newer set of recipients. I can change the report to weekly, daily, and I can change the time period for which also I want to see the data, right? I can change it to one week or one month. But so it's a very handy uh, capability uh, which uh, gets you the automated visibility around the testing activities without you having to come to the product every time, right? And we're extending this capability to also have more reports. Right. I think moving uh, forward, uh, we have also an admin panel on the settings page. You have, uh, you know, keep, of course, you can integrate your uh, to Jira uh, as as a project management tool. You have other capabilities around how you can uh, customize the values for test case form fields. So, for example, like test case priority and type of test cases, I can start defining some newer set of values that say highly critical, super critical, release blocker, or other set of custom values that are defined for priority. And these are the ones that come by default, like critical, high, medium, low. And I can map these custom values with one or more projects, depending on my need. So I can have a fully customizable view of my test case authoring uh, form, right? And we are extending this capability again to let you define more custom fields from UI itself. Uh, right now, that capability exists through CSV import. You can add any number of custom fields by adding those uh, uh, incoming uh, fields as uh, new columns in your CSV import. Right, uh, UI capability is going uh, live soon. I think uh, last uh, bit that I want to talk about is the API support that we have gone live with uh, recently. We have uh, published our API uh, list of APIs, public APIs that are out there for teams to use. Uh, we have started with like list of APIs for accessing your uh, projects added in the account. You can add test runs and test plans. You can add results 
to your test runs or test plans uh, through APIs and basically schedule those test runs on the basis of some business logic, uh, right? Um, and and you can like get started with uh, APIs for our test management as well. And we are again like enriching our list of API support to also have APIs for test cases uh, uh, for reports. You can schedule reports also via APIs going forward. Right? So that was an overview and a demo of uh, browser test management for all of you.